Oh, okay. Here we go. This is a perfect example of a study of love that I did. I titled it, A Love Worth Dying For. The question is, agape. I won't go through all of it, but it's a great study. Here we go. I don't remember why I said this is not a stick up. This motivation behind a hostile. The motivation being behind, that's a typo, behind a hostile. Ooh, I remember why I said that. Yes. Anybody ever been in an argument, a hostile situation? Yeah. Tough argument. What would motivate you to show love in a hostile situation? Because that ain't even logic. Girl, they coming at you. Don't take me. I know you quiet. They take you for granted and make you have to come out of care. And you been took your hair and did this here. <laughs> How can you stay the peaceful person you are like this in a hostile situation? I got a question for you. That's my brother. When you want, how do you want him to love you? Like, like if, you could if you could describe the love you want for him, how would you describe it? How would you define it? Unconditional? You heard that? Sound cute, don't it? All right, let, let's see if it's cute or nasty. All right? This is why most people get married. Baby, don't get married for this. So there is a Greek word. We would just simply say love. But Greek being a more descriptive or pictorial language, it would use the word eros, which means a sensual or romantic love. We call that in love. Most people get married for eros because they are in love, right? This is when man Raven, y'all just look at each other and just don't even know why you smile. <laughs> or they call and say, I'm around the corner and your heart go. <laughs> hmm? I know my brother still do you like that, Trudy. You hear that dodge coming, I know you. <laughs> yes. Sir. But see, here's the problem, Trey. Eros is conditional but most people get married for it so when you pick somebody you you say not do I love them but is it Eros Eros is great but not commitment worthy right then you have another Greek word called storge this is a familial love okay this is your love for your little brother. Your love for your, you don't have to be, it's natural. Eros is natural. It does not, you don't have to study storge, right? Then you have phileia. Phileia is the love that God called for amongst us. I have to, so I have a brother that's my biological brother named Michael. I have to be able to love y'all like a brother. It's where you get Philadelphia from. City of brotherly love. It is where you have a friend or a sister that's like a real brother or sister. So when we call each other brothers and sisters, or you read, um, you, don't, you hate your brother, you don't love your brother, it's talking about you don't have a brotherly and a sisterly love amongst each other, even though you're not blood. But God is calling us to love one another as brothers and sisters. And this is why you're given, brothers and sisters, to know what the love should look like when it's not really a brother or sister. Right? So when they so watch this. So if you go back and you study the scripture where they said your mother and your brother looking for you, he said, Who is? My mother and my brother. My mother and brother are who? So that means it, it, it's bigger than what make you family to me if you try and obey 
You got me? That's dealing with philia. Then last but not least, agape. Agape, I put, is uh, God's love for humankind. Uh, let me see here. What did I do here? Okay. Eros. This love is physical, sensual intimacy between a husband and wife. It, it, it's expressed sexually or romantic attraction. I put stuff in, like if I put a color, that's my notes for me. If I put it in a color, it had something significant that I know I need to stress to you. So when I see the color, this is why you have pencils and highlighters. If you highlight something you wrote, it was significant, right? Um, Eros is also the name of the mytholog myth mythological Greek god of love, sexual desire, physical attraction, and physical love. Love has many meanings in English, but the ancient Greeks had four words to describe the different forms of love precisely. Storge, family love, phileia, brotherly love, agape. Y'all see this? That's what you said you wanted. So wait a minute. Here's the problem about agape. No human being has it by nature. So if you're looking for agape out of him, who he need? Here's what's crazy. Everybody asks for a, a, a unconditional love and don't realize you asking for God. Amen. You ain't got to go to church to ask for unconditional. unconditional. But now here's the thing. Can you give him unconditional? Yes, sir. Or is yours conditional? That's a question you got to ask yourself. I can tell by that. Look, it's conditional, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that look told you. Yeah, it's conditional. <laughs> so now watch this. You just learned something about yourself. And this is all people. We will instill laws on others that we won't put on ourselves. Mm. That's exactly what the Jews did. They would put stuff under obligations that they weren't willing to give. And so watch this. Through offering to him the love that you want, it's the only way that you appreciate when he give it. Yeah. Did y'all get that? When y'all having y'all late night talks and you wishing for something, while you wishing it, ask yourself, can I give it? Because you may be asking for something that costs too much for you. Amen. And it may not seem like it, but y'all, we having Bible study. It's called being equal in your ways. Eros, marital love. Although Eros does not appear in the New Testament. So in other words, if you started studying love in the New Testament, you won't find Eros. Like, you know how we did the Greek study? You won't find that word. You can find phileia, you can find storge, and you can find agape. But eros is one you won't find in the New Testament. So when he say husbands love your wives, that wasn't eros. Somebody look it up. That's, that's your homework. Pull up on your phone. Tell me what the word was, the, what the Greek word was for love. In, it's Ephesians chapter 5. My mind is telling me 25, but it's right there. It's 25, 26, 27. Somewhere right there. But tell me what love it asked, which one of these it asked for. And husband love your wives. Brandon, question. What did God command, did God command her to love you? No. What did he command her to do? Biblically. What did God command her to do biblically? I'm only asking you this because y'all dating, right? So you could be requiring something of her God didn't even tell her to do. She might not already be giving you what God told her to do. It's okay if you don't know. This is how you study. It's in Ephesians 5. So when she tell you how you're supposed to love her, just keep reading down. 
And it's going to say, wives, make sure that you what? No. Well, yeah. But it says submit to your husband's how? So which means she got to know who? And so when you keep going down in that chapter, it says, wives, make sure that you reverence your husband. He didn't tell you you had to love him. He said, just make sure you respect him. Because he know how we operate. It won't cost how we operate. I thought that's all God said. Mm -mm. Just me and Peter. This is how love is set up. If you love her right and she respects you right, she will love you. <laughs> it's a natural process. She just got to start out being able to respect you. She don't have to start out loving you. But you have to be something respectable. Amen. So what you get is for love. What was the Greek word? Was it agape, storge, phileia? It was agape. Mm. Husbands love that woman regardless if her mouth is fly. You can't stop her from twerking. <laughs> Ain't that unconditional? Ain't twerking part of the conditions? You don't never know what you might get. <laughs> See what I'm talking about church folks writing? They didn't think twerking was a part of one of the con unconditional. Some people that hear music, their body just start moving. They don't know they done started twerking. It's a habit. I'm like, you got so I got to hold God because God loves us unconditionally. I don't like coming to church and then we get so saved. Like, this is what go on at home. You know, you know what it's like at the college parties? We're in there trying to be cute, you know? And boy, but that, that one right there in that bass hit right. And, and next thing you know, you in rhythm with the bass. I've been there, y'all. But like, man, when she at her worst, you can't be like, no, nah, because she at her worst. Unconditional. That's what she asking for. So to answer the question, I went the long route. Now that you know it's four, and it's really more than word, four words, but I only gave you four. Agape is a love you only learn from God. It does not come naturally. It has to become a learned behavior. It is not instinctive. Did y'all hear that? Agape is not an instinct. It is something that you literally have to learn to do. And this is why we have stuff like Matthew 5. He said, uh, you have heard to hate your enemy. But I tell you to love. Because what have you done when you love those that love you? What's so special about you when you're giving her love because she's giving you love? What dude wouldn't do that? So if you just say, big deal. But when you come home and you just go off and you be like, what you tripping about? And you can find a way to say, baby, what's wrong? Versus, girl, you, you better, huh? And see, she might get crazy. So you still in the boyfriend, girlfriend period. She might get crazy and call you weak and go get her a, a man, <laughs> right? <laughs> And she go off with him like that, and he say, hold on now. So don't be one of them dumb young girls you think he don't love you unless he choking you. Because you know they act like that. If you don't choke them and slap them, you don't care. That's right. This truth is real talk right here. I'm talking about the world. I'm not talking to church folks. I'm talking about in the world. Right? right? Right. So when you find one when you at your worst and he can still find a way to communicate with you, consider that one, Sister Carl. Because everybody can't do that. Amen. This was marital counseling too. 
Yeah, I just kind of mixing it all together. But y'all do know the y'all do know the word. Y'all do know the word ain't nothing but one big date, right? Yeah. Did y'all know the word ain't nothing but one big date? Like when we talking about studying, do you know what we really learning? How to listen to God? Don't just take him for the surface. Like, what did you really mean when you told me that God? That's what studying is. He is literally conversing with us. And we not, has anybody ever said something and they misinterpreted what you said? Studying is intense listening. Very important word study. Things that we learn in the world, we thought the intimacy thing for one thing. We thought that was all about sex. I thought that was this. You know what I'm saying? But when I learned the way of God, I'm like, why? And that's usually got word study. Amen. Studying is intimacy. Any questions? Did I answer agape? What the difference is? Yes, sir. Loving your enemy is really where agape kicks in. Because that's when the conditions ain't right. And that's why, like, when I was explaining, I explained that, like, God don't necessarily like us, but he loves us. Was that correct in me saying it? Because I, I would want to pass you. God don't necessarily like us. Because you could love somebody, but not like them. I don't know what else right now. No. Find it for me. See, you real fast. One of y'all find it. Look on it. It's in uh, Javo. I think it's in Isaiah. He said something like, uh, I do this not for your sake, but for, oh, listen to this, brother. I do this not for your sake, but I do it for my name's sake. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Find okay. that one for me. Find that one for me. So you'll hear me use the term Brandon, man versus man. Man is something I made up. What is it? I think it's Ezekiel 36 and 22. That sound right, Javo. Now I'm talking about the characteristic of God. Um, yeah, that's it, Javo. Okay. This go with the husband love her like I loved you. Look what God said. Therefore say unto you, house of Israel, thus said the Lord God, I do this not for your sake, O house of Israel, but for what? My holy name's sake, which what? You have profaned amongst the heathen. What is God saying? If you go back and you read the whole text, God blessed Israel. He did right by Israel, but he didn't do it because Israel was right. He did it because his name was on it. Do you see why I apply that? In order for you to love her right, in order for you to love her right, me, it's going to be times, man, you're going to have to do right in your house because your name on it. It can't be based on your Israel. This is why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, I told you it's a good book to read. He said, it's a good name is better than precious ointments. Certain things shouldn't fit your name. He cussing her out. Josh? I'm telling you, Josh. What? I got to call you. Man, they telling me, you cussing my sister out. And you're going to say, what? Because it don't fit your name. We got to start caring about our name. Sometimes you got to do the right thing because your name is all you got. Amen. Amen. She sleep with everybody. Why, niece? Who? <laughs> Man, you finna start a fight, cause now I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> don't don't y'all get one, niece? Boy, 
She'll get her Christianity up about that. <laughs> it ain't supposed to fit. Amen. You see what I'm saying? That's when you care about your name. If you just care about your name, you'll stay out of certain things. Amen. And that's what God is saying here. He said, Israel, I didn't do it for you. Amen. My name. Now watch this. That was another one from studying. I didn't know where it was. Hard drive kicked it back. That comes from the reading part. And then you'll do your topical studies. But what I gave y'all today was, I gave y'all how we took one scripture, how to do word study, to go back and look at what it was in its original language. And I gave you how to get cross reference scriptures that you can get a whole lot of other scriptures that'll break down what you were studying. And we got all of that from one text. And it's much more I'm gonna give y'all, but I just gave y'all like, right? So I tell y'all what, write this down, everybody. We're gonna do a personal study together. And just know, I got the support of a school teacher. The only way you can flunk it is if you don't do it. So please have your work when you get to class. Have something. And your something do have to have something to do with love. Don't just go get a scripture before you come to class next time to say you did something. Right? But I want you to study the word love. What resources can you use to study the word love? Huh? Google? What else can you study love? Dictionary. Blue letter. The Bible. The Bible. I mean, going in and reading, the scripture. Definitely you need the Bible, amen. What about Greek mythology? Can you use that to study love? Because it was a mentioning of Greek God heroes. Do you agree you can use Greek mythology? Do you agree that we can use Greek mythology to study love? Okay. And you said it because what? They mentioned Eros is the name of a Greek God. That's what they love. Yes. I'm looking for one more. Trace. See, when you go do February 14th, you're going to learn that that Eros word was the name of a Greek god. That Greek god was converted into a saint name, Valentine. And then, you remember we were talking about that beast and stuff? That ruled the world? They gave y'all a holy day called Valentine's. Where everybody shows them. And most of us are here because of Valentine's Day. <laughs> Romantic love. So what I'm saying is you end up getting way more about love than you really want. And then you'll understand why I say, be careful what you say when you say you want more love in the church or when you say you want unconditional love. Because God says, however you judge. So if you know what unconditional look like, do you know the cost of it? That's called government check. You want it, but you don't want work. Exactly. And we do it all the time. Like, we all want something that we're not willing to give. That's so true, man. But the only way you can appreciate it is when you tell that kid to turn off the lights. Your mama said, turn them lights off, girl. Now, when you get your own electric bill, I'm going to see if you're going to tell your baby. Don't make me tell you no more to turn them lights off. Boy, turn them off. Huh? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. We get anything? I gave y'all a lot. Y'all take some notes? Yes. Study love. 
Y'all already got your cheat. You got Eros, Storge, Philea, and um, Agape. You don't have to get into the Philo, Storgo. It's boy. He'll tell you. Get into some other words. <laughs> like you can come, like you got compound words. You can compound Philea with some other stuff. You can go if you want to go down that street. Go ahead. I suggest you don't, cause it's like a rabbit hole. Just get the big picture. And you got to be able to always bring whatever you find back to the Bible. Somebody find, find Eros in the Bible. See if you can find it. It's a challenge. Eros. 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 All right.